Hello everybody out there watching on YouTube and welcome to race number 27 slash chase race number one of season five of the NNSCRA Marvel Studios Cup Series. I'm Levi McIntyre, the voice of the NNSCRA Marvel Studios Cup Series, here to welcome you to the Grand Canyon 500 here at Canyonland Raceway as we are getting set for eight laps of racing here at this over 11 mile long restrictor play racetrack. Now this, this is going to be interesting considering we're probably going to see godlike speeds out of these cars and perhaps some of the most chaotic racing and wrecks we may ever see. But before we get into all of that, let's actually take a look and see how the chase is. So for those who missed the last race, which was Darlington, the chase grid looks like this. Joshua Collard, Carson Gum, Dylan Jacobs, Chris Dollerton, Benjamin Miles, Jake Rogers, and James McLeod all have the points lead. And then the three other drivers who didn't get a win but are in the chase were Kyle Matthews, Alex Drayden, and Paul Minikin. They are all three points behind the points lead. So that is how the chase grid looks coming into the race today. But of course, this is going to really shake up the standings quite a good bit for the chase drivers. Speaking of the chase drivers, let's take a look at the starting lineup. But first, starting in the last row, we have Joshua Sikuli, Charles Sanford. And then the chase drivers as where they start. Chris Dollerton in 36th. Alex Drayden, 34th. Uh, James McLeod, 24th. Paul Minnick, 23rd. Joshua Collard, 21st. Kyle Matthews, 19th. Benjamin Miles, 18th. Jake Rogers, 16th. Uh, Dylan Jacobs, 10th. Carson Gum, 8th. And I think that's uh, pretty much it. So that is uh, how the chase drivers are going to be starting this race as far as where they're going to be starting in the lineup. But the top 10, James... Excuse me, I had a little uh, mix-up there. Jay Jefferson on the pole for today. Starting next to him is Jake Baskinger. Row 2 is James Shelley and... Diego Yepes, row three, Dougie Shears, James Qualls, row four, Ryan Butcher, Carson Gum, and then row five, Anthony McCreary, and Dylan Jacobs. But let's go ahead and get the command to fire engines for the Grand Canyon 500 at Canyonland. Drivers, start your engines. So this racetrack, yeah, you can see it is very, very roomy. And even drivers are allowed to go below that solid white line. But then again, it's that uh, lower white line you don't want to go underneath. So we could see perhaps six, seven wide racing potentially as the pace car pulls into pit road. And it's time to boogity, 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 go racing.
Well, Jay Jefferson led the first lap right there, but as you saw, caution just came out for a multi-car crash. One of those drivers being a chaser in Chris Dollarton, who I think took the worst of that wreck. Other drivers I saw in there were Sakuli in the 11, Hoffman in the 99, and another chaser, Alex Drayton in the 14. But then there's perhaps some other cars with damage. Tim Fiegel with a huge buckle on his front end, and I saw damage on the side of DJ Curtis. And even James McLeod, another chaser, got some damage out of that too. But yeah, tough, uh, tough break for a few chasers to start off the chase with by having a bad run. So as we wait for everything to get settled out, let's take a look at the, re at the replay of what brought the caution out for the first time today here at Canyonland. So here's basically where all this is going to start. As you see, Chris Dollarton, he's trying to get a run underneath the 48 of Cody Lamas, and then actually it was right there. Lamas comes down into the 12, which sends him into the 4 of DJ Curtis, and DJ Curtis does go below the double yellow line right there, and he's trying to get back on the racetrack, but then Dollarton... I don't know what Dollarton's problem was with the four right there, and he just decides to keep him underneath the double yellow line, and then right there, DJ Curtis ain't having any of it, and is going to come up and turn Chris Dollarton hard into the inside wall, and then Dollarton's going to come back up the racetrack, and then a pretty big hit into the driver's side by uh, Tim Fiegel, and then Fiegel right there is going to get into Ethan Hoffman, and here's how the other cars are going to get involved as, wow, Rafael LeDuc was so close to getting in there. And pretty hard uh, impact for Alex Drayton right here. Watch the speed. Over 200 miles an hour, hard into that safer barrier. But uh, let's wait and watch whenever Joshua Sakuli, who was in the back, let's see how... He gets his damage right there, a very hard hit into the front end of Dollarton, and then he's going to take another hard impact head on into the outside safer barrier, and that is how all these drivers ended up with the damage they ended up sustaining, whereas Fiegel got major front end damage and McLeod got some uh, right side damage, which could affect the which could affect the speed of the race car potentially, but. Let's go ahead and take you to the restart here at Canyonland. So after taking a long, long time to get through the uh, pace laps, we finally got to the pace car lights going out. So when we get back to racing, it's only going to be three laps, but it takes over two minutes to get around this racetrack, so it's still a long ways to go. But the drivers that are out of the race after that first caution... As expected, and the lucky driver was Tim Fiegel, who's going to still get 35th place and get some points. Everyone else behind him will not get points, and they are James McLeod, Alex Drayton, Chris Dollarton, Ethan Hoffman, Joshua Sakuli. Three out of those drivers are chasers, so tough break for some of them chase drivers. But the field, when we get back to racing here momentarily, Jay Jefferson, still your race leader and has already clinched most laps led for leading pretty much all race long under caution. Second, James Shelley. Third, Seth Cole. As Look at that. Affiliate teammates up here in the top three. Fourth is Dylan Thoreau. Fifth is Preston Plourd. Sixth place right now is Sean Galligan. Eighth, or actually seventh, Patrick Smith. Eighth is Dylan Young. Ninth, Benjamin Miles. Tenth, Colin Phillips. 11th, Matt McIntyre, 12th, Anthony McCrory, 13th, Joshua Collard, 14th, Jessica Shelton, 15th, Jake Rogers, 16th, Carson Gum, 17th, Dylan Jacobs, 18th is Emmanuel Hartnett, 19th, Diego Yepes, 20th, Dougie Shears, 21st, Cody Lamas, 22nd, Paul Minnick, 23rd, Ryan Butcher, 24th, James Qualls, 25th, Dylan Pote, 26th, is Jonathan Zorlin, 27th, Jake Baskinger, 28th, Charles, uh, or actually make that Trent Dunham, then Charles Sanford, 29th, 30th, DJ Curtis, 31st, Kyle Matthews, 32nd, Colin Francis, 33rd, Rafael LaDuke, and 34th, 
Zachary Fitzwater, and these three have no hoods, so I gotta wonder if perhaps everybody came in the pit road and there was a stack-up issue on pit road. I don't know, I'm gonna be curious to see what's gonna happen for those drivers for the rest of the race as we are still awaiting to go green. It's still gonna take a little bit, as like I pointed out, it takes two minutes at full speed to get around this racetrack, but when we're under caution, it feels like an eternity to get around this racetrack. But uh, while we wait to go back green, let's take a look and see where the remaining chasers in numerical order are currently running, since I'm not remembering right now. Paul Minnick currently scored 22nd as he's getting ready for the restart. Carson Gum, 16th. Benjamin Miles, 9th. Kyle Matthews, 31st. Joshua Collard, 13th. Jake Rogers, 15th. And that's everybody. So let's get back up here to the 87 of Jay Jefferson. We've got to be getting close to the uh, start-finish line momentarily. But I guess while we wait some more... Let's actually see where the rookies that are still on track are scored right now. All the rookies that are still racing. Ryan Butcher, 23rd. Colin Phillips, 10th. Diego Yepes, 19th. Colin Francis back at 32nd. And then, of course, the one rookie out of the race being the 99 of Ethan Hoffman. So... Only one rookie out of the race out of the five, and that rookie battle actually has gotten a little bit heated between a few drivers who I... I think the bottom two as far as the rookie battle is concerned, I believe are Colin Phillips and Colin Francis. As the pace car finally pulls into pit road, and we're finally going to get back to racing with three laps to go here in the Grand Canyon 500 at Canyonland, and we're back underway. Jay Jefferson didn't get off to quite as good of a restart right there, but because he got the bottom lane then going there, he's going to stay in the lead. As meanwhile, we might see a battle for second between teammates. Seth Cole trying to figure out a way around James Shelley. As now already drivers are going double to three wide and maybe even four wide. Yeah, you can see the slower cars are starting to lose ground back in the very back of the field. And they were, it looked like they were four wide for a second right there. But yeah, Jay Jefferson, who barely missed the cut of making this season's chase, looking for his second win this season. He picked up his first win back at Watkins Glen just recently. Right now he's trying to go for win number two, and he has led every lap so far today. And like I said, he's already clinched the most laps led bonus points because of the fact that we were under caution for so long. And we're finally back underway as things are starting to get a little racy up here at the front or close to the front as drivers going double to three wide behind the 87. And you can hear how high screeching those engines are running. That's because of the speeds. Let's see how fast they're going. Pretty much almost 250 miles an hour, which is unprecedented for a race of this magnitude. Dylan Thoreau actually in that 17 trying to get the outside line to kick in, which is interesting to say the very least. But he's got no drafting help right now. Look at this interesting camera shot as they went through the tunnel right there. And then that camera shot, and I saw Jake Baskinger, he's starting to lose the pack right there. There you see, he's just on the very tail end, just behind Charles Sanford. Now we've got two laps to go, 
in this race. And actually, Jay Jefferson lost the lead right there. Dylan Thoreau has the spot. But if a wreck happens now, the race would end under caution regardless. As things are starting to get, uh, like I said earlier, are starting to get a bit dicey. As the middle and top grooves are racing each other pretty hard, the bottom lane's starting to really kick in for some drivers. As we look at this uh, interesting spectator camera, and now we switch back to TV1. As it's four wide up here with Patrick Smith all the way up high. And I'm shocked not a lot of drivers have been going up higher on the racetrack. They've just been on the uh, very bottom of the actual track and that uh, dark gray apron part of the racetrack. James Shelley going to go up higher. So too is Seth Cole. So they're going to try and see if they can't get a run up on a higher groove. But right now, Dylan Thoreau still hanging on to the race lead. For now, Jay Jefferson, who's been dominant is right behind them, but look at Jonathan Zorlin go. He's trying to work the outside as they are four wide for fourth with Cody Lamas leading the charge on the bottom, but leaves it open for Paul Minnick, who's a chaser. He's trying to gain ground in order to try and get the points lead. Right now, Minnick would be the highest running chaser on the racetrack and would be able to get the points lead, but still anything can happen as we still got a long way to go even though it's less than two laps left it takes a long long time to get around this racetrack as white flag is out for Dylan Thoreau oh and there they go I saw a crash take place oh and it's a hard crash Dylan Jacobs another chaser was involved Numerous other drivers. Benjamin Miles, who was another chaser, was caught up in this. Qualls was in it. Seth Cole damaged. Even the points leader, one of the points leaders, Joshua Collard, got damaged. Trent Dunham, I saw, involved in that. As right now, Dylan Thoreau still hanging on to the race lead, but it's not quite over yet, and Jefferson trying to run a lower line than the 17 to be able to make any kind of move on the 17, but he's also got the 88 of, uh, of Zorling behind him trying to run the outside line, and Jessica Shelton... Excuse me, almost had a hiccup there. Jessica Sheldon trying to get up here into the mix. But these drivers need to try and work together and run a different line if they're going to be able to get around the 17 of uh, Dylan Thoreau. Because right now, Dylan Thoreau is in the catbird seat to win this race. As Zorlin continuing to try and get the outside line kicking in, but nobody's going with him. That's the problem. But Thoreau seems like he's in good hands, for now, at least. As you can see, the pack really got separated after that crash that just took place. But it looks like it's all Dylan Thoreau as we're coming to the checkered flag. Dylan Thoreau wins the Grand Canyon 500 at Canyonland. Made a timely pass with three laps to go and managed to get his first W of the season, I think. Yeah, that is his first win of the season, and he definitely wanted to get that considering he missed the chase by one point over Paul Minnick. Or he lost it to Paul Minnick by one point, but this has definitely got to be some redemption for the 17 for his farewell season. as we await all other drivers to uh, get across the start finish line. I think some drivers even ran out of gas on the last lap, which is interesting. So some drivers barely had enough fuel to continue, but let's look at the rest of the results as we can. Jay Jefferson, who led the most laps today, still gets a phenomenal run in the second spot. 
Jonathan Zorlin tried to run the outside line to win the race, but still gets a third place finish. Highest finishing rookie once again, Ryan Butcher, as he's trying to close in on potentially winning Rookie of the Year. And then Jessica Sheldon rounds out the top five in the fifth position. Highest finishing chaser was Jake Rogers in the sixth spot. Uh, Colin Phillips finishing in seventh. Paul Minnick with a strong run in eighth. Diego Yepes ninth. And then Dylan Young rounding out the top ten. Then there's the rest of your top 20 with Carson Gum finishing in 12th. Joshua Collard 18th. Then the rest of your top 30 with uh, Kyle Matthews 26th. Benjamin Miles 30th. And then the rest of the field with Dylan Jacobs 33rd as far as chasers go. And the cars that were out of the race were all the ones who were out from that first caution. And the bottom five once again was... James McLeod, Alex Drayden, Chris Dollarton, Ethan Hoffman, and Joshua Sakuli. So that does it for our coverage here today at Canyonland. Very bizarre race to say the very least. Hopefully next time we come here for next season, things will be a lot better. But until we get to our second race of the chase, which I'm not quite sure what it is yet, here are your final results. Rookie points and regular points heading into the next chase race. And this is Levi McIntyre signing off.